What's up guys, I got a brand new video for you today and today we're taking a look at some software that might change the game and how you edit photos. This is pretty cool. There's a lot of stuff in here that I haven't seen before. Of course, we're talking about Luminar Neo and this video is sponsored by Luminar. They sent me over a pre-release version of the software and we're gonna talk about it today. We're gonna jump right in and edit some photos and I've just randomly selected a few photos that I thought would work for this. So let's get right into it. Let's take a look at this image first and the UI is very simple. When you click on edit, you have all your options on the right hand side here. There's a few that are missing. I notice on the portrait side of things, there's a few things that will be coming in the full version, but we're just gonna take a look at a few things that they've added in here. And the main one I really wanna look at is Relight because that's their newest thing they've added into this. And Luminar Neo is actually running on a brand new engine. So that's why it's kind of a new version of Luminar versus you know AI or four and stuff like that. So let's jump right in here and look at this. So obviously we've got develop which would be kind of just like your raw settings. I think this is just a JPEG. I will take a look at some raw files later, but in here you obviously have all your options for exposure, your highlights, your shadows, and things like that. But like I said, I really wanna just take a look at Relight here because this is pretty cool. Relight's kind of making like a 3D depth map of the image, so using AI, it's figuring out you know what's in the foreground and what's in the background, and this is really cool. So when you see the depth here, if I turn down the brightness and the distance, you can see the background starts to go darker, but if you see the depth here, you can kind of see as I move it that the background gets darker. And basically what it's doing is it's kind of pulling that background and foreground blur. But what's cool is, check this out, when I click brightness near, it's literally just lighting the model that's in front of the camera. It knows what's in front and behind. So when I move brightness far, you can see it's not adjusting the model, it's only adjusting the background. So you can really make your subjects pop out of the background if you want to. I don't want to go too overboard because it's going to look a little fake, but here, if I boost the brightness up a bit, lower the brightness down in the background, that's pretty cool. Now, another new thing they've added is erase, and they have the option to do remove power lines and remove dust spots. And I'll get to dust spots later, but if I click on power lines, obviously I have a random power line in the top of the frame here. If I click remove, what it does is it analyzes the whole image and then it just kind of figures out through AI what's a power line and what's not. And there you go, just remove the power line. So power lines out of the shot. And I'm just gonna kind of go through this and edit using some other options in here. Cause obviously I don't have any dust spots in the image. Um, the other thing is they have the erase tool here, which is kind of like the clone tool. And I think it's smarter than the clone tool. You can clone out stuff. Say we didn't want some of this dust on the jacket here. So you can go to your brush radius. You can see it change size here. I'm gonna go a little bit smaller. And I'm just gonna erase that some dust spots on the jacket and then hit erase and just clones them out of the shot. But let's go to the develop here. I'm gonna bump the exposure up just a little bit, bump the shadows up a little bit. And the other cool thing about Luminar, a lot of people know this, is the sky replacement. You can choose any different type of these skies. You can also download different skies, but let's say it was kind of like a sunset mood, something like this. What it's gonna do is it's gonna analyze the sky in the image and <laughs> put it right in there, which is crazy. This guy might not work for this. We can try a couple other ones. That one's pretty good. That's pretty dramatic. That's kind of cool. Let's go with something like that. I don't mind that. That's pretty good. So obviously when you're looking at this, the skies are never usually that in focus. Usually they're usually blurred out. So if you go to more sky adjustments here, you can go to defocus. You can actually blur the sky out a bit because typically you're not gonna have the sky in focus that much if your model's in focus. So going back to develop, we can go down to our color here. We can change our white balance a bit. I wanna warm up the whole image. That looks pretty cool. Um, I might boost the shadows a bit and go down to relight again. We'll make a real moody shot here. And one thing that's different about this versus something like Photoshop is in Photoshop, you have your history and it can only go back the last steps that you did. If you go to edits here, you can see all the things that you've added and you can revert them back to default or you can go back and make changes. So say we wanted to adjust our sky, we could go back and change our sky. If we wanted to go into relight, we could go back and relight things. So. Basically, you can go back on your history of that specific adjustment that you made and make those changes, which is really cool. Something that I've never really seen in editing software before. All right, so that's pretty cool. Obviously, I could go in and make it 
perfect if I wanted to, but I'm gonna leave it like this for now and we're gonna move on to another image. So I'm primarily a portrait photographer, I'm not a landscape photographer, but sometimes when I'm out on trips and stuff, I will take photos and I took this out west. I found an image that had some dust spots on it and that's not something I have on my camera. I'm pretty picky about having no dust on the sensor, but in this case I was shooting at like F22 and obviously you're gonna see some dust on the sensor. So let's go to erase and remove dust spots. And this is gonna save you so much time having to go and clone those out yourself. Boom, it just removed all the dust spots. It did a perfect job, I think. I can't see, I can't see any, so obviously it fixed it. You can go to Enhance AI, and this will enhance the whole image, which is pretty cool. Basically, it kind of just adds like a clarity effect to it and boosts the saturation, but that looks pretty cool. Let's go back to another portrait, because I'm not really a landscape photographer. I just wanted to find an image that had some dust spots. And this is a raw file, this is from the Canon R5. And I'm just gonna go to develop and kind of make a few changes. Warm it up a bit. Okay. Then I'm gonna go down to relight because this is the best new feature of this software. And I think the depth is pretty good. We're just gonna brighten this near, make her pop out of the frame a little bit better. Obviously you've got brightness far, you can turn up or down. I'm gonna leave that. Then you can change your depth. And then you've got advanced settings, dehalo, warmth near, warmth far. It's just some extra things that you could do to balance the image. I don't think I need to adjust those things. It looks pretty good right now. Um, one thing I do want to go to though is the enhance option here and just kind of turn the accent up a bit. That's going to make her pop out of the image better. Now when the full version of Luminar Neo comes out, there's gonna be a lot more options for portrait. One of them they've talked about is portrait background removal, which is gonna be really cool because you'll be able to just remove the background simply. I think it's just gonna be a really fast way to do masking. And right now there's a few things missing. So all I can really show you is the skin AI, which is pretty cool. So let's do some AI skin retouching. So you've got the amount, which is the amount of smoothing it's gonna do. So I'm just gonna move this all the way up so you can see what it's gonna do. And that's not bad, that actually looks pretty good. All I did was move that slider. All it does is kind of balance out the skin and remove a few defects. You've got shine removal. She's not that shiny in this, so I'm gonna leave that. But something that's really cool is called skin defects removal. And what it's gonna do is when you turn that on, it's gonna analyze the skin. It's just gonna go through and pick out some of the blemishes. And what's crazy, if I go before and after, there's before and there's after. It did a really, really good job. And if you look at it, it actually left in her freckles, which is what I would do as well. So it's kind of looking at the overall image and just going, you know, this is what looks most natural without overdoing it. And that's what it cranked to 100%. I don't even need it at 100%. You can see it looks really good. I'm gonna go back to enhance because I actually like what it did with the color. I can't believe it did that good of a job on the skin. That's crazy. Now, obviously there's some hair here that I want to fix up. so. We can go to Erase, which is basically like the clone tool, change the brush radius. Just go in here and erase the hair. Just click Erase. And as you can see, it removed the hair off her face there, just like it would with like a clone tool. That's all I'm gonna show in this video. I might go over the full version when it comes out and just take a look at some of the other options they've added. But the Relight tool is really cool, being able to adjust your background brightness as well as your foreground, making subjects pop out of the background. I think it's gonna be really cool to see what the full version looks like. And uh, yeah, I think it's coming out pretty soon. It's coming out in the next couple months, so stay tuned for that. I'll have links in the description where to find this stuff or more about Luminar. And uh, thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you dislike this video, give it a thumbs down twice. Don't forget to hit that notification bell. See you guys in the next one.